Check out Rocket Lab, up nearly 100% in the last three months, part of a bigger space trade. Uh, Rocket Lab also getting added into the Russell 1000 Friday after the close. The company achieving a big technical milestone this weekend as well, completing two launches from the same site in less than 48 hours. That was a record turnaround. Joining me now, Sir Peter Beck, Rocket Lab founder, chair, and CEO. Peter, it's great to have you back on the show. Welcome. Great. They're great to talk to you, Morgan. Let's start right there with this fast turnaround you did with these launches over the weekend and how it speaks to how quickly you're ramping the cadence of your launches. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a, a rocket rolls off the production line here every 15 days or there, thereabouts, um, and it was good to good to get a couple um, of vehicles one after the other. Uh, of course, you know, we've done 10 launches this year so far, so, um, you know, it's it's been a, a big step up in cadence uh, so far this year, and we, we look forward to seeing that continue throughout the year. How does that speak to what you're seeing in terms of demand for launches? I mean, case in point, yeah. whether it's commercial players or governments, Everyone I speak to says they need more competition in the market. Case in point, this very public spat between Elon Musk and uh, President Trump really highlighting how dependent overall the market is on SpaceX. Yeah, I worry about a lot of things at night, but that, that's probably not one of them is, is demand. Um, and, you know, for Electron, our little rocket, we've seen, you know, increased demand uh, over the last couple of years. And we're not just launching, you know, single spacecraft. These are generally entire constellations for customers. And then, of course, you hit on the point with Neutron is there's, there's kind of a pseudo-monopoly in that medium-class lift right now. So Neutron is, is aimed to, to kind of break open that, that, that monopoly. So, yeah, a lot, lot, of, lot of demand. Um, and, you know, the, the, uh, the, the demand is one thing, but reliably delivering over and over again is, is equally as important. So when does Neutron fly? Well, we're trying to get it on the pad and launch this year. So it's, uh, it's an aggressive uh, timeline, but uh, we, we're giving it our best shot. You also recently made an acquisition, Geost. Are you still acquisitive? How does that expand your portfolio? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in fact, we've made, made two recently. So one was uh, a company in Germany, uh, Monaric, uh, that's under underway at the moment. Um, and then, of course, as you mentioned, Geost. And uh, Geost really is our first uh, foray into, into payloads. So, you know, we, we're very well known at building rockets and building spacecraft, but now we actually build the payloads uh, to provide excuse me, a, a real end-to-end -end service for our, for our customers and, a, and a, you know, a stronger foothold in national security. I was just talking about it before the break, the fact that defense spending is growing here in the U.S., but internationally as well. And we're seeing spending on things like space in particular, whether it's from a national security standpoint or even a civil space standpoint, mm. uh, those, those dollars are increasing too. Where do you see the biggest opportunities uh, and how much of that is domestic versus international? Yeah, so, I mean, generally our, our backlog looks something like 50% commercial, 50% government, um, and it, it kind of ebbs and ebbs and flows between the two. But I would say that, you know, in a, in a more unstable world, there's, there's definitely more, uh, you know, more necessity for some uh, space assets. So uh, we see national security being a, a bigger part of our portfolio. But, but nevertheless, we like, to, we like to hold that sort of healthy mix of both commercial and government. 